I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna to do an Inkscape tutorial. It's gonna be a beginner, beginner intermediate level. And I wanna show you how to make some monochromatic landscape art. So this is the source photo we're using today. So this is from Pexels, pexels.com. It's an open source platform. And I wanna give credit where credit is due because this is from a photographer named Eberhard Groskus Tiger. And I appreciate his work because I'm pretty sure there's not a spot on the planet that actually creates this uh, lighting effect. So I think he edited that. So to give him credit, we're gonna use this as kind of the inspiration. And this is the example we'll make together. So I took pretty much the color palette from him and some of the layout also looked like there was either a plane or a spaceship, but I wanted the plane just to go straight up. So <laughs> let's make it. Before we begin, Inkscape recently had an update. So the most recent version as of this filming is Inkscape 1.1. It gives you this landing page here. So if you're a new user, just go to time to draw, print, and then A4. That will launch a new workspace, but since I already have mine set up, let's go with this one. All right, so grab your Create Squares and Rectangles tool, draw out a rectangle roughly the size of the project that you want. Now mine has a red fill and a black stroke. So if you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it says paintbrush thing in the corner. On fill, I'm gonna use the eyedropper and I'll choose this pink. That's gonna be the base for my project and I don't want the stroke anymore. So on stroke, just X out of that. I'll put the hex codes for this monochromatic color palette in the description below. I'll also link the source photo from Eberhard Groskus Tiger if you want that too. So one of the key tools we're gonna to use in this tutorial is the gradient feature. The way it works is if you have an object, the base color will be whatever your fill is. And over here is linear gradient. If you click on that, it'll go to the default, which is base color to transparency. This pencil thing will bring up a bar that lets you edit the gradient. So this is linear gradient it's going from full pink to full transparency based on that one base color. But today we wanna to use the radial gradient, which is up here. So click on that. And now we can modify things in two directions. If you grab the center point, you can move where the radial gradient expands from, which is kind of cool for some different effects. But um, first things first, I don't like using gradients to go to transparency as a base of a project because if you'll forget that it's there and when you uh, transport it out of Inkscape, then you got like transparency issues. So let's start by clicking on the circle and down here is your opacity. So this is full transparency, this is opacity. It's the same base color, but now let's reverse it. So I'm gonna go from the base color on the outside and I want my highlight to be on the inside. So I could just drag back the transparency, but now you'll see what I'm saying. I've got a problem, I have a hole in my project and I, if I'm gonna print this out, I want it to be opaque. So how do you fix that? just make the center part white. So let's go live with this. I'm gonna move it to a more asymmetrical position. You can pull either of the circles on the end of the gradient to expand or contract. And if you want more control, you can double click anywhere on either of the bars and that'll add another stop. So in this case, I'm gonna just pop that one in there so that I can really fine tune how it goes from my brightness here to the outside. Right there, looks good. Let's add the hills in the foreground now. So to do that, I'll get the Bezier pen tool. And for settings up on mode, I wanna be on the standard regular Bezier path, which is the squares and these lines right there. So if you've watched previous tutorials, I like to build new objects into the composition that can bleed off of the edges here. And at the end, I'll stamp it all together. It just makes it easier to move things around and play with them. So with the Bezier pen tool, I'm gonna to draw just whatever, wherever it takes me to make the first hill. It's gonna be the same color as my gradient, which is close. I'm trying to keep a monochromatic palette here, but I want it to be darker so that the layering shows a, a deeper contrast there. So on the color wheel, I'll just pull it into just a little bit more. And on top of this, let's go back to the good old linear gradient. Go to edit and you'll see what's happening. So I'm gonna go from this direction down here, go full, and then we'll go to some lighter. Right, pretty good. Maybe move this in a bit more. I'm gonna layer these so I wanna have more contrast on top of each other. But before we go on to the second hill, I'm gonna add some real, real tiny detail using a cool tool, uh, the spray can. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna draw a very ugly tree. So there's, there is a tree that looks terrible, but it won't look terrible when we, when we shrink it down the scale and plant them all over the hills. So we gotta get the color correct. It's somewhere around there. For a fine detail on this rudimentary tree, I'm gonna go to the pen, the calligraphic brush stroke tool. Click on that. 
I like to be on dip pen. For the width setting on the proportions of my screen, I'm at 0.5 millimeters. All you wanna do is get it to a point where when you draw it, it's very thin like that. Thinning's 10, mass two, the fixation 90, but for tremor, this you're gonna to have to modify. The preset is zero, I have it on 50. So I'm just trying to get a stroke that looks choppy like these. So I'll get rid of those. And I'm just trying to add very fine detail, just making the edge of my tree very choppy. I do have to fix the gap between the pine needles and the inside. So I'm gonna choose the inner part and I can expand it until it's about where you want it to be. If you wanna get very, very exact, you can choose the edit paths by node and then bring them so you don't have the, the extra, too much white space in between. It won't matter at scale, but you know if you're a perfectionist, you might wanna play more. That will do it. So trust me, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna grab the select tool, grab everything. So you have all your components there. Control G groups it together. And now we have our little tree. Let's zoom back into perspective. So the, the effect, we're gonna maybe make it taller. The effect we're gonna do is the spray can, we will spray whatever object we pick. So let's make this very small. I'm just trying to give it like um, a profile of a forest on the top of the ridge line here. So let me show you how spray can works. First, select spray objects. It looks like a spray paint can and you'll have some modes up here. You can either choose the first one, which is spray copies of the initial selection, spray clones. I wanna choose spray objects in a single path. The width is gonna show you the width of your spray area. The amount is about how many objects it'll shoot out every time you click it. And the scale is the variability of the size of the object. So the settings I have are width 30, amount 20, rotation zero, scale 25, and scatter one. Let's zoom in and I'll show you what I mean. So first, make sure you select the object you wanna spray. So go to selector tool, I have selected my tree. I go back to spray can, all my settings are there, and I'm gonna draw along, <laughs> you just plant in trees. Just click on it and put them wherever you want. If you see a gap right there, just shoot some more out there. Down here, plant some trees down here. So you can see at scale, it doesn't really matter how ugly it was with our dip pen. If you are a perfectionist though, I will show you, you don't have to spray can it. You can actually take it and do control D and then that duplicates the object and you can place them if you really wanna have like, let's say you just, you wanna feature one tree. I'll put it right there and make it big. So with my ridge line in place, now I don't like how these just look like they're sitting on top. I want it to be a, a true profile. So I'm gonna change my gradient here. Double click or single click on your object. And I know I have my gradient edit tool here. And now is when I can, there you go. Put it where you want it to be. I might add a third step in there. So I'll double click. And let's go somewhere in here. Just so I have some more control. I'm pretty happy with that. So from here, I'll go to the selector tool. I'm gonna to group everything by drawing a big box around my ridge line and the object. Control G will group it. And now I'm gonna cheat by doing Control D, which duplicates it. So I can make the second hill and the third hill just from this thing we, just, we already made. And the duplicated object is on top now. Now over here, you have different directionals. I'm gonna choose the left right directional. If you click it once, it's gonna change there it is, there is the other hill. I'll drag it maybe down this way, but I want it to be behind the first hill, so this is hierarchy, these book things. So I'll go down one step, it takes it all the way back. Since I have the base of the project, which is fully opaque, I can play with the transparency of this one. So since it's further away, I'm gonna take the opacity of it and reduce it. So there see, now you can see a little bit more distinction between the two. It also fades out. I'll slide it in right there. Let's cheat once more. I'll take the original, Control D, we'll duplicate it, and I'll drag that one just so it goes into the lighter part of the gradient, and we'll change the scale right there, and we'll leave it at that. Actually, before we move on, I added a couple more trees at the bottom with the spray can, and just tweak things a tiny bit more, because now I'm gonna lay on a layer of fog. And for that, we're gonna use the watercolor effect. I've done a more in-depth study of the watercolor effect on some previous tutorials, so you can check those out. But the quick version is this. Just grab the circle tool and make 
a random shape, maybe an oval, doesn't matter the color, and we'll go to filters, texture, watercolor. Now, if it doesn't show any type of watercolor effect, your blur might be defaulted to full, which makes it harder to see. So play with your blur until you get, see, if you go to, if you reduce the blur all the way, it goes back to the original shape. So try to find a part where you like, the, right about there was good. Now, let me show you the effects. If you still can't get this type of watercolor droplet, go back to filters, filter editor. All right, so I'll just burn through what I what I have my settings at. So this is the default for now. It's got uh, Gaussian blur, usually it's around between five and 10. Turbulence, the octaves is five, seed is 27. Composite over, color matrix, I never touch that. Displacement map, that just changes kind of the interior. Composite in, composite in. This is a new composite for 1.1, arithmetic, I've never touched that. The most important one is the last one. It should be blend mode multiply. The last cool setting I wanna show you for watercolor is if you take your object and you go to edit paths by node, you can move it around and that will change the watercolor droplet. And you can also expand it with the two squares. Don't touch the circle, that'll, this is what happens. Just don't touch the circle. Now we wanna turn this into fog. I'm gonna expand it a little bit Let's move it into place and we'll change the color. So we'll go to white. And now I'll play around with the opacity and the blur. It's a very organic tool and you really have to modify it and just see what you like. I think I'll go with this for the foreground fog and we'll cheat, we'll duplicate it. And let's see if we stretch it even more, what it's gonna look like. That's pretty cool. I want the foreground fog to be in front of the hills, but this background fog, I'm gonna drop it two steps or until I see it go behind that third deep hill. There we go. All right, we're getting there. So you wanna draw the quickest airplane ever? Let's, let's do that. I'm gonna make a super simple airplane using this uh, oval. We're on white, let's make it a gray airplane. Grab the Bezier pen tool, make a wing. The opacity wasn't full, so I changed that. Go back to your fuselage, full opacity. Duplicate the wing, bring it down. There is the tail fin. <laughs> That's an airplane. Again, we're gonna take this down to scale, so it doesn't matter what the proportions are exactly. In fact, it has a little bit more charm when it's rough. It doesn't look like much is floating there, so I'm gonna make that jet trail that comes out of it. I know vertical doesn't always happen, but I'm just trying to make an artistic choice here. I'm gonna choose the calligraphic pen again for the settings dip pen. I'll change the width to 0 0.250. Thinning actually takes into account how fast you move the mouse. I'll change that to 30. And then I need my tremor back. I'll do 50 on that. And then here we go, just draw straight down. There is your flight trail, whatever that thing is called. But I wanna duplicate it. So first I'll select it, control D, drop that down one step. I'm gonna add a blur. Show you what I'm doing here. So I'm blurring the lower one. Then let's group the two together. If you've got different objects in the way, you wanna click off of everything, hold shift, and then just get the two pieces you want. See how I have the two boxes there? And I can group that together. Cause I do wanna maybe make this thinner. Let's see how it turned out. <laughs> He's escaping. Some plane is going to space. So there it is. Let's stamp out the final project. When you have watercolor in your composition, you're gonna to have to go way outside of no man's land to grab everything. So you see how I know it, I'm certain I have the watercolor there. Then you can do control G and that groups everything. With it all grouped together, you can grab the rectangles tool and create a rectangle, which becomes your clipping box. And now you can decide what part of this you want to be in your final project. That looks good right there. With the clipping box selected, hold shift. I got everything else, then go to object, clip, set. And there it is. So there is our monochromatic landscape art featuring an airplane just flying straight up. So if you have any questions about this tutorial or a tutorial you'd like to see in the future, leave a comment below and have fun with it.